Blevins here with a quick overview, maybe not so quick, this may end up like a 10 minute video, but uh, of my last day of week four and my first day of week five, which is the second week, uh, the middle week of the intensity phase that I was moving into. So you see here some pause squats to start out. Uh, on this particular day, I did pretty well. Um, this was one of my better days. It was after a busy week at the end, and I had to push it a, uh, a day off my normal schedule because of that. But it actually ended up okay. Um, definitely could have been worse. And worked up slowly just at adding tens on each side of the pause squats uh, to work up to my final working sets, which was uh, 525 uh, for four. And so moving from 6x6 six six to 4x4 four four was definitely a major break on the pause squats. I actually messed up and had looked at the, uh, the week ahead where I was supposed to do 4x4. Four four. Um, actually on this day I was supposed to do a 4x5, but you know, small adjustments like that are not going to make too big of a difference in the long haul. Um, a rep here, a rep there. Um, but yeah, I did do a little bit less volume than I had initially planned. However, I felt my positioning was pretty good on these days. Also, my bar path was pretty good as well and was fairly happy overall with these. That said, on pause squats, one of the things that I've noticed is I descend slower on pause squats, uh, probably at the uh, last five to six inches down on the squat. I'll start to slow more than I normally would, which makes it harder to gauge when I'm actually pausing down in the hole. So I don't do really long pause squats as you know, however these are a slightly different form but fairly close really to my low bar squat in general. Also I don't do a lot of high bar pause squatting, mostly it's low bar pause squatting. I feel that that transfers better and it helps to teach me where the bottom position of the squat is as well as where depth is. And so I'm using this as a tool to help with my form. Uh, that said, Followed up with some benching after this that moved pretty well, but what I want to talk about today is trials. And the reason I want to talk about trials is when we get to the end of this video and into the next week, the first day of week five, I really have some issues with my deadlift. And I was I had spoken with my uh, coach earlier in the week and had said that I wasn't going to go for an all-out grinder, that I wasn't going to push it too hard, and that is absolutely what I intended to do but was not what I was able to accomplish on the day. Now, it, some of it had to do with I got a little bit out of position, and for a sumo deadlifter, getting out of position is pretty much you're not going to break the floor with the lift. But I definitely was discouraged in the workout when I failed one of my reps. And I failed some deadlifting reps before, and then come back and hit some big PRs. In fact, the last time I pulled 750 in the gym was just a week after missing a rep in a peaking phase, uh, doing a double instead of a triple on one of the sets. And in fact, it was doing a, uh, I missed the third rep, I believe, with 680, and then came back and hit 750, and I believe that was on the Texas Power Bar. And so I worked with 675 this week, and missed the third rep as well. So, it may not be terrible, but what it means is really my deadlift strength hasn't changed a lot over the last maybe four or five months. And coming out of the last competition, which didn't go very well, a little discouraging, uh, moving into another training cycle can be discouraging as well. And after I missed that rep on deadlift, I was extremely frustrated. That said, I came back and decided to drop it down 40 pounds to 635 and was only able to do a single. I pulled the rep and immediately knew this is going to be a grinder set and I'm not supposed to tax my central nervous system that way this much with deadlifting. It's just a, it is a strength day. I was doing three by three as my main work, but that was not the point of the day. Now, you'll get to see the reps here later, but this is kind of a long story, so I'm starting to get mid-video. Regardless, when I did that single of 635, I knew that part of that was mental. Um, I had just done a double with 675, yeah it was a grinder, um, and I was not able to break the floor with the third rep as out of position. There are a lot of things uh, factoring in, not excuses, just explanations of the phenomenon. But there was no way that I could not do at least a double with 635. And so I put on the straps um, that I use for deadlifting, mostly because my hands were starting to get chewed up with some slow reps on this uh, uh, Ohio power bar which is 
very, very like gnarly, I guess. It is a grainy bar and rips up your hands pretty good. That said, um, didn't have any grip issues on the day, just fingers and stuff were starting to tear, calluses were starting to get chewed up. So I put on the straps and I was able to knock out three reps with 635, but the last rep on that set of three was also a grinder, something I would call RP 9.5 or 10. And so I dropped it again to 605 and did a set of three without straps. And at that point, I thought to myself, this is now 70 pounds away from the working set that I had planned. And I knew I might drop down maybe to 655 and maybe 635, but to have to go down to 605 and then do my work there was pretty frustrating. And I knew that a lot of that had to do with my mental attitude. And I realized that I've been thinking so much about form in my workouts and getting everything perfect, especially on sumo, that I had been forgetting to just lift the weight, to really push hard. And when I get to those maximal loads, I think ultimately I'm not going to be able to be as cerebral of a lifter as I might like. I really enjoy having a more calm attitude and being uh, more thoughtful in my lifting. But perhaps maybe with deadlifts specifically, um, I'm going to have to really get rid of that so that I activate my entire body at once. Because when I focus on spreading the floor, I forget to pull with my back and push with my quads. And when I focus on pushing with my quads, I forget to pull with my back. Or when I pull with my back, I forget to spread the floor. And these three pieces all move together in the deadlift to make it a single motion. And they all have to fire at once, or you're not going to complete the lift. And this is where, one, repetition work is going to be important for me, especially repetition work with lighter weights. But just getting on the lifts and grabbing the bar and going is going to be important. And so, I was trying to set up uh, and move the weight well on this day. That was 585, which moved pretty well for a single. This, I then jumped to 635 as kind of a test, again, because I didn't want to go for an all-out grinder. Um, and it moves pretty well. There was a lot of hamstring and back there, though. That was a little less quad than I would have liked in my sumo. And then here's the 675. Uh, that I talked about. And no, notice my torso position and my chest position at the top of this lift when I first start. Right there, chest is pretty forward, head is up, shoulders is back. First rep moved really well. Thought this is going to be an easy triple. Got a little bit more bent over on the second rep. Had to lock it out with my back. Drop the weight. Probably shouldn't have done that either. Reset completely though because I'm like, I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot so this isn't a grinder. Get it up. Can't even break the floor with it. And yeah, maybe I could have ground that out some more. Maybe I could have pulled harder. Maybe I would have injured myself. Maybe I would have strained an erector. Or maybe I would have ground out the lift and made my triple and felt really good about myself. But there's that 635. At that point, mentally, I was starting to fail and had to really pull back uh, to get back on track for the workout. Or the whole workout would have been derailed. I did seriously consider just calling it a day there uh, as far as deadlift goes, but I decided instead I needed to practice some mental toughness. In any case, that mental toughness is important, and I like this workout for that reason, that if I'm in competition and I miss a lift, I am going to have to come back and make that lift. Um, if I miss an opener, I'm going to have to come back and make it. If I miss a second, I'm going to have to repeat the lift and make it. And so... Getting three reps here with 635 was really a turning point for the workout. Though at the same time, I didn't start ego lifting or start acting stupid. And I also knew I need to make sure my grip is not the weak link. So I got rid of the straps, did not use them um, for this rep. I have them on my wrist still, but I'm not using them. And pulled 605 for three. Now 605 for three is pretty terrible for me uh, overall for triples. But it's what I had left on this day after missing a rep. And after having a grindy single and then doing that triple, which was also at what I would call RP10. And just to get the ego out of it, when I went to block poles for sets of four, I didn't re-up the weight. I had scheduled for this to do 675 again for, uh, for my sets of four. But you know what? I wasn't going to do it. And even on these, I was still too conservative. You'll see on the, uh, the fourth rep for the first two sets, it's kind of slow. 
And I really had to get my headspace right, to get my mind right, and to get pulling on the weight hard to lock it out. You see that last rep, there's kind of a soft lock out there. And that's something that can be missed in training. I'm not saying that you should be super emotional all the time. I'm not saying that you should be headbutting the walls and punching holes and things. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that if you're going to train, you still have to train hard. And you have to get after it. And whatever you have to think about to do that, whatever you have to think about to get your head right and to get in the right space, that's what you need to do. You can see that this set here is much faster than the previous set because I was working harder I was working better and I was doing you know a more focused and intense workout rather than just thinking okay externally rotate pull your knees out on this set I really started to get going and just started moving with it because I was frustrated it was a frustrating workout that rep there was very fast I wish more uh, more reps looked like that and the last rep is almost faster than all the other ones. Uh, I carried over that attitude where this day was almost lost and just a total waste of time onto floor press. And so did a set of four, paused the last one, crushed it. Went all the way up, made a big jump, 50 pound jump up to 455. And though I had some form uh, deviation on this, the weight overall moved pretty quickly. And this was after having a floor or a incline press PR of uh, 335 for, uh, for 5, which was a PR by, I think, 10 pounds over what I had done last. And then I'm throwing a little bit more back English. I was a little too upright on this set with uh, 275 on the rows. But this is also something that, though you may think, oh, you're getting a little too, too intense, your form is breaking down. I'm actually doing this on purpose. Ed Cohen talked about using a little bit more back, though this angle looks a lot better. And it's, a little, it's much more of a rowing motion than it is me pulling with my arms or with my biceps. And so this is really hitting my lats a lot. And so that's something I'll probably be doing from you know, this point onward. In any case, I was thinking about this scripture um, about when you're under trial and about how trial produces endurance so that you can be perfect. It produces steadfastness so that you can be complete, lacking nothing. And this is something that everyone learns as they go through training. You will have bad training cycles. You will have very bad workouts in those training cycles. Those things happen. But when they happen, you have a choice. You have a choice to let those bad experiences define you. To let those bad workouts, those bad reps, those bad sets define what the rest of the workout is going to be. Or you can choose to overcome that. You can choose, and it's going to involve losing some of your ego, lowering the weight. But that doesn't mean that your intensity should drop. As I lowered the weight in this workout, my intensity actually increased. And by intensity there, I mean my mental intensity and the desire to move the weight. It wasn't so much a, am I going to be able to lift this? It was, the bar is coming with me as I stand up. Or, I'm going to press this floor press. I'm not going to miss a rep. Uh, a more confident, a more assured attitude, a more intense attitude, a more focused attitude was necessary on this day to get through the work. And that's how negative experiences should impact us. Trials should make us stronger. They should make us better, not weaker. Because as we overcome them, we become better people. In any case, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I hope that I don't gain any more character lessons through failed lifts or bad workouts, but whatever may come will come, and I'll deal with it as it does. In any case, I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.